Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a very special video as we preview NXW Uncensored as well as look back at NXW Best in the World and Strong Style 2016. Joining me here live in the Skype call, Demonic Burger, my colour commentator, say hello Demonic. Hey guys, how's it going? And Demonic, we have got an epic pay-per-view lined up for NXW Uncensored, but before that, we are going to have a look back at NXW Best in the World. And we are going to start off with the open challenge by former NXW television champion David England, who was hoping to have a one-on-one -on -one match, but instead got, ended up in a fatal four-way match. And... Um, as the match progressed, uh, Majestic got the better of uh, David England uh, while Jai Tong and AJ Freeman were having their own match, which we'll get uh, get to later on. And uh, Majestic uh, got the pinfall on David England and ended up the new NXW television champion. Now, Demonic, your thoughts on the match? It was back and forth, really. I mean, the way Majestic uh, ended the match was absolutely incredible. I mean, both men, all the four men, put up a great, fantastic fight. I've got to admit, I can't, I can't, how can I, how do I put it? I cannot hate on the match because it just kept going and going and going. So, Majestic did deserve the win in the end. I've got to admit. And I, I was kind of surprised. I mean, uh, the NXW board of directors did take a liking to David England. That's why they gave the title to him before the pay-per-view. But um, the fact, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that when it came down to Majestic and David England, England didn't get really a, a bit of single offense on Majestic. Now. In strong style, David England did have another opportunity to not only win the NXW European Championship, but also become the first ever wrestler in the NXW roster to win hold uh, to hold two titles. Sorry, but unfortunately, uh, that didn't come true. Could this be a desperate situation for David England as he heads into NXW Uncensored? to challenge Majestic in a ladder match for the TV title? Um, I don't know, to be honest with you, because, um, well, if you look at David England at the moment, because he was expecting one opponent, opponent right? But it turned out to be three opponents, didn't it? Yes. Uh, obviously, that was, uh, that was uh, a bit of a mistake on uh, David, uh, David's part. But uh, nevertheless, um, in my opinion... At un uh, NXW Uncensored, it's do or die for David England. I mean, you got to ask yourself, what will happen if David England fails to win the ladder match against Majestic? Because when you think about it, Majestic is a cruiserweight, and cruiserweight associate themselves with uh, ladder matches and TLC and all that other uh, stuff. So you got to believe that the advantage belongs to Majestic. Well, Although, the thing is, the thing is, he may be an arrogant wrestler, but he still does have talent, so you cannot underestimate him at all. Oh, yeah, and uh, speaking of arrogant, it's a funny word that you chose there. Uh, that would be the, the, the appropriate word to describe um, one of the contestants in the second matchup, which was a six-woman battle royale, and that... Uh, word arrogant uh, was pretty much the perfect description for Christina Bloodrose, uh, a former NXW Women's Champion, and uh, she was going up against some tough competitions. One of them uh, being the newly graduate of the NXW Wrestling School, Olivia Lockhart. And in my opinion, one of the biggest shocks in the short history of NXW. Olivia Lockhart not only eliminated Christina Bloodrose, but also went on to win the match. Now, Chaos, uh, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, Demonic, uh, we'll get to Chaos later on, uh, but Demonic, your thoughts on Olivia Lockhart and shocking the entire world in that battle royale? Well, she was the least expected to win the match as well, because uh, not only was she... Um 
like one of the weakest weaker contestants, but she managed to um, win with other five other divas in that ring, and she managed she pulled the courage to stay in that ring and what it means to her to try and become a champion. And uh, I guess in her mind, she didn't really expect to win at all, but uh, there she she, um, she managed she was to. In shock. I know. I I, I couldn't. Uh, Obviously, due to my reaction, I was in complete shock. I thought, since it was down to uh, Christina Bloodlows and Nicole Knight and uh, Olivia Lockhart, I thought, oh, it's, uh, it's only going to be a matter of time before Olivia Lockhart gets eliminated and it will be down to Bloodlows and Knight. But obviously, that wasn't the case. Uh, the shock elimination came. Everyone was still stunned. And I'm guessing that shocked Nicole Knight as well. Uh, to a point where, you know, she lost all of her focus and she got herself uh, elimina uh, eliminated as well. So, a big win for uh, Olivia Lockhart. Moving on now, and uh, I'm guessing this match uh, kind of upset you a little bit, Demonic. Your boy, Chaos, uh, losing in a handicap match to the general manager of NXW, Jeremy Clarkson, and the head trainer of the NXW Wrestling School, Joe Franco, but in my opinion, Chaos did quite uh, did put up quite a performance in a losing effort. Uh, now, I've your got a thoughts. question for you, though. I've got a question for you. Do you reckon that handicap match was unfair? Well, to be honest, I, I had I did have a word with both uh, Franco and Clarkson for the reason for this handicap match, and uh, t what they said to me is that uh, they weren't quite satisfied with uh, Chaos's performance uh, so they thought that was the only way to like bring out the best in him and um, in my opinion I think they did that even though Chaos lost I think the experience that comes with that match could ob uh, obviously benefit him but obviously uh, that was short lived after we'll uh, talk about uh, later on um, as we discussed the match card for Uncensored. But uh, in my opinion, with the fact that Chaos managed to bust open uh, both uh, Franco and Clarkson and survive a barrage of low blows and uh, uh, punch, uh, producer punches and suplex and back breakers and back body drops and still kick out until the very end where he got a uh, fell victim to the destroyer suplex. I think uh, Chaos uh, should be proud of himself uh, for the great effort that he put on. So, win or lose, I think um, he should be very satisfied with that performance. Well, it did take a couple of low blows as well. I mean, Chaos was still in much after a couple of low blows, what Clarkson did to him as well. Well, it's NXW. Anything can happen, really. Uh, we don't really tend to go with disqualification victories that often but uh, next up uh, in my opinion the uh, best match of the pay-per-view uh, the internet title match between two YouTubers uh, Lockdown aka Sam Breaker the internet champion and Bad News Bullet or Bullet Sky as he likes to call himself from time to time uh, in a last man standing match um, in my opinion, I I thought it could go either way. I thought, um, you know, Breaker would not be a hundred percent due to the triple threat TLC match which he had earlier before the pay per view. Uh, but I thought it was a good back and forth match. I thought uh, Bullet Sky had him until the point where Bullet Sky went for a top rope move, but then got met with a super kick. Uh, and then followed by uh, an unpretty or a kill switch, as they like to call it now. But um, at the end, uh, kill switch engaged uh, by Sam Breaker, and uh, Bullet Sky couldn't beat the 10 count, and uh, uh, Breaker retains the title. So, your thoughts on the last man standing match between Breaker and Bullet Sky? Bullet Sky, if you are watching this right now, I give you credit because you put up a hell of a fight in this match. I don't know how you kept getting up on all, on all these moves, but you managed to put up a fight better than anyone else in the pay-per-view, so I'm proud of you. Good, well done on your performance, even though you didn't win. 
you still are an awesome wrestler. And uh, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with uh, Bullet Sky as well. He, like you said, he put up a great performance. And uh, Sam Breaker is just one of those wrestlers that continues to impress the audience as uh, the matches, uh, as time goes by. Uh, what is your opinion on uh, Sam Breaker in general? In general? Yeah. Uh, what, as a champion or... Uh, as a wrestler, uh, champ I don't think um, you know ch him being the internet champion uh, really matters. I mean, he's a great, a great wrestler, champion or not. Well, he's still the champion now that, that we speak, so he is a good wrestler as well. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I congratulate you, Sam Breaker, as well. Well done. But Bullet Sky took more of a punishment at, at the end of the day because he got super kicked off a top rope, kill switch, everything. Yes, and um, now Sam Baker, despite being the internet champion, has turned his attention to the world champion, Tom Doyle. And I think this could be uh, the beginning of an interesting and yet long rivalry between the world champion, Tom Doyle, and the internet champion, Sam Baker. So, you know, a, a potentially a, a, a great match uh coming soon maybe but who knows um sam breaker will defend his title at nxw uncensored which we'll get to uh later on now while well, the uh, other matches uh i forgot uh which match it was uh hang on a minute uh oh yes the uh, first of uh two air uh, tag team title matches uh which was the uh Steel K, uh, no, not the Steel K, sorry. Uh, it was the uh, McGregor brothers, sorry, uh, against the Disciples of Darkness. And uh, to be honest, it was a very tough match for the McGregor brothers since they were dealing with the most destructive tag team in NXW history, the Disciples of Darkness. And of course, with it being a, um, a Tornado tag team match, uh, there was no clear advantage to either team, but in the end, uh, the brothers did manage to succeed in retaining the titles, defeating the Disciples of da uh, Darkness. Uh, Demonic, my question to you, can anyone stop the McGregor brothers? I don't know if you ask me, I mean, you have to have a hell of a fortress tag team to take down the McGregor brothers, because basically, the Disciples of Darkness are like the Brothers of Destruction of NXW, because... I mean, think about it. They are all-time legends, them two. But, but they, it still wasn't enough to take down the McGregor brothers. So the question is, who will take them down? Well, at NXW Strong Style, an interesting development uh, took place, uh, which will uh, answer the question, hopefully. Uh, but uh, before we uh, get to uh, NXW Uncensored, let's uh, move on to... The uh, women's tag team championships. Uh, the Asian Sensations losing their titles to the new champions, the Pretty Mean Sisters. Um, I was kind of surprised, actually. I thought uh, the Asian Sensations will probably uh, pick up the victory, but in my opinion, I think uh, Satoru Sakamoto uh, kind of lost focus on the matchup and Tiki Suzuki the the golden goddess uh, uh, kind of was a little bit confused she couldn't quite make out why um, Satoru Sakamoto was uh, a little bit off focus uh, did the pretty mean sisters say something uh, to her backstage before the match or was it the height advantage that got the best what of, was she uh, distracted about though that's the thing yeah, I mean, there were plenty of opportunities in that match to get the pinfall or the elimination, for that matter, on one of the Pretty Mean Sisters. But, unfortunately for the Ace and Sensations, uh, the Pretty Mean Sisters used their height advantage and power advantage to, uh, to you know, their advantage, sorry, and um, they managed to uh, win the title, so... My question to you, uh, Demonic Burger, where do the Asian sa uh, sensations go from here? I don't know if you ask me. I mean, basically, 
Are you on about the Are you on about the people who won this match? Uh, the, the the Asian sensations who lost the tag team titles. Right. Okay, gotcha. Uh, basically, the Asian sensations might have a have to have a long talk with each other because I mean, look what happened in this uh, tag team match. Like Christ Almighty! Did you, did you like like you said? Um, did you see how she reacted? Uh, yeah, I mean, after uh, Satoru got uh, eliminated, it was pretty much down to T uh, Tiki Suzuki, and despite the brilliant fight that she put up, it was pretty much a losing effort from there on out. I mean, I give Tiki Suzuki credit for putting up a very fight, but in the end, uh, the pretty mean sisters reign supreme, and they are your new. NXW Women's Tag Team Champions. Uh, the next match was the Fatal 4-Way Hardcore match uh, for the NXW Hardcore Championship. And I have to say that this was a really competitive matchup between the champion Tyson Kays, uh, the Canadian Clicks Eddie Evans, uh, Japan's Kobayashi, and New Zealand's Noah Tomassian. Um... A highly competitive matchup, like I mentioned earlier, uh, with uh, Eddie Evans pinning Noah Tomasian to win the championship. And we have a new NXW Hardcore Champion. Um, but my question to you, uh, Demonic, is that uh, in this uh, division where injuries are most likely, do you think that Eddie Evans has what it takes to re uh, become, well, does Eddie, Eddie Evans have what it takes to hold on to the Hardcore Championship as long as possible? That's a good question, actually, because they are he is going against uh, a lot of tough competitors, isn't he? I mean, look at Tyson Cage. He's been in NXW ever since the start, right? Yes, uh, former uh, tag team uh, champion and um, world champion Tyson Cage. Um, same could be said for Kobe Ashley as well, a former world champion and world tag team champion. Uh, Mo Tomasian, a, a newcomer, but a very dangerous individual. I thought this would be the perfect mass, uh, mash up, uh, match for Noah Tomasian, but obviously didn't get the job done. The technical grace of Eddie Evans was uh, good enough to have him win the Hardcore Championship. and. In my opinion, I think uh, this will be a good challenge for Eddie Evans to see if he is true uh, championship material. Um, final question before we move on to the next match. Uh, do you think now that Eddie Evans is the hardcore champion, will he uh, prove to the rest of the world that he is a true uh, championship material or is he just a flash in the pan? Oh, I don't know if you ask me because I don't mean to offend him, but I reckon he's a flash in the pan if you ask me because um, I don't I don't reckon he's going to keep this title much longer. I mean, look at the other three competitors. He's he's not going to stand a chance against those three. If they team up against him, you know what's going to happen, right? Yeah, but luckily he managed to walk out as a hardcore champion and a, a good night for Canada. Uh But moving on and to the most, well, the first controversy of the night um, as NXW Women's Champion Jessica Bishop was set to defend her title against the Battle Royale winner Olivia Lockhart, but as you saw um, during Olivia Lockhart's entrance, she was viciously attacked by Christina Bloodworth who was obviously you upset pissed. Pardon? You were pissed that time Oh, Jesus Christ, where do I begin? I mean she lost fair and square, uh, Blood Rose did. I mean, sure, I mean, if you work your way up, you can get another title shot. But you don't, you don't have to bloody take someone else's opportunity. But, like I said before, um, she was viciously attacked. Olivia Lockhart couldn't, uh, wasn't unable to uh, proceed with the matchup. And the officials had no chance, uh, no choice, should I, uh, should I say to have a rematch between Jessica Bishop and Christina Bloodrose. Um, Jessica Bishop uh, was not prepared for Christina Bloodrose, despite the fact oh. that she won the title from Bloodrose a couple of weeks before the pay-per-view. But uh, She wasn't uh, prepared. 
that's the thing. Yeah, and Blood Rose uh, walked out of Best of the World with the Women's Championship. So in the end, Blood Rose's plan to walk out of NXW Best of the World as the Women's Champion did come true, despite a lot of controversy. Now, uh, Demonic, your thoughts on the whole situation? About this brutal attack? Uh, uh, well, the brutal attack, uh, the match itself, and the fact that Christina Bloodrose is the NXW Women's Champion. She wasn't even a, an, even a contender. She should get more than just a rematch. She should, like, get something... She should be given the title. I know that sounds a bit stupid, but... Be, Blood Rose won the match, right? So she should have been, like, confiscated. That way, she gets given the title to, uh... Is it Jessica Bishop, is it? Sorry? Well, um... Originally, it was uh, Olivia Lockhart's, um... You know, uh... Number one, con uh... Well, title match. Because it was supposed to be Olivia Lockhart versus Jessica Bishop. But obviously, Christina Blood Rose decided to, uh... Ruin everyone's, uh... Uh... Well, the, the entire match and decided to uh, input herself into that match and you know the fact that you know Christina Blood Rose is the NXW Women's Champion it, it just makes me sick saying that I mean here's a woman that manipulated the fans to cheering her on uh, during her rookie years in NXW uh, when she won her first championship uh, her attitude started to change and Basically, she just turned on the fans, and then as when Jessica Bishop turned up, and it, it, it just got worse from there. So, and from what I've heard from the board of directors, um, Jessica uh, Jessica Bishop will have her rematch as as well as um, Olivia Lockhart and Christina Bloodrose. Uh, one way or the other, will pay the price. So we will get to that uh, later on. But moving on to the second to last match, um, which was the NXW Cruiserweight Championship match between Ravy Ray and Travis Storm to crown the first ever Cruiserweight Champion. Uh, in my opinion, these two men have a huge future ahead of them. Um, a brilliant matchup bet uh, between these two, uh, back and forth, but in the end, uh, Travis Storm. Uh, representing Canada or the Canadian clique should I say uh, picking up the win and becoming the first ever uh, cruiserweight champion uh, demonic your thoughts on Ravy Ray and Travis Storm in the epic match well Travis Storm is a really good wrestler because uh, like I said uh, he's, he's, he's another Tyson Cage isn't he because he's been in the same uh, company as long as him as well that same person as Tyson Cage, and they have rivaled each other because I do remember that from that them days they did rival each other at one time. Um, but yeah, what's the other guy's name? Sorry, Ravy Ray. Ravy Ray. Ravy Ray is a fantastic wrestler. I mean, look at him. He, he he's he's full of joy. I mean, he he just gets overhyped. He does, and he's like a Scotty to Hotty. Let's just say that. <laughs> well, I can't argue with that. I mean. The hype uh, was built up uh, for this match, and I think these two lived up to the hype. Uh, my only concern is is that uh, during the match, uh, Travis Storm delivered two vicious neck breakers onto Ravy Ray onto a ladder, and the NXW medical staff have been quite concerned with uh, the condition of uh, Ravy Ray. But uh, from what I've heard, Ravy Ray says that uh, he's around 80% um, healthy but uh, he should be healthy in time for NXW uh, uncensored um, but in my opinion a, a great effort from Ravy Ray but as I mentioned before Travis Storm walking out as the uh, Cruiserweight Champion uh, moving on to our main event of NXW Best of the World the third encounter between Tom Heather and the world champion Tom Doyle in an Extreme Rules match for the NXW World Championship. Now, this all started many, many years ago when Tom Heather issued a challenge to Tom Doyle. They met in a two, two out of three falls uh, match in their first account up with Tom Doyle walking out the winner, uh, two falls to one. Um, 
The second encounter was an Iron Man match uh, in which, yet again, Tom Doyle walked out of uh, uh, the Iron Man match sorry, uh, with the victory. And this was their third encounter, so obviously Tom Heather had a lot to, a lot to prove in this match. Uh, as well as Doyle, because we are talking about the greatest prize in core wrestling history, the NXW World Championship. Um, a bullying contest back and forth uh, between these two since they've known each other so, for so long now. Um, but in the end, uh, deja vu occurred when Heather tried to go for a crossbody, got caught by Doyle, and Doyle delivered a F5 made the cover 1 2 3 and um, Doyle retained the title uh, before we get on to what happened after the match uh, Demonic your thoughts on the match uh, in its entirety well it actually didn't surprise me that Doyle won actually because Tom Hever has never ever been in an NXW match before he has been in CAW, OVW and all that but not NXW because NXW is a completely different story it's a different league, different roster, everything he's never fought any of the people here except uh, except uh, Doyle here kid a lot because um, basically Heather is a good wrestler I'll go a man, so is Doyle but uh, Doyle got the better upper hand and got the pinfall yeah and just when you think uh, it, it turned out to be a good night for Tom Doyle retaining his title, all of a sudden the lights went out for a few seconds and then when they came back on, uh, Doyle was viciously attacked by FAM's Ron Buster uh, who delivered uh, a sleeping pill, a GTS and a couple of chair shots and everyone was in total shock, even I was. Um, I admit I was a little bit pissed off that uh, an outsider came into our organization, invaded our pay-per-view, and attacked our world champion. Um, which, to be honest, I'm I'm still shocked because I've had words with uh, the world champion, and when it comes to Ron Buster, Tom Doyle sees him as an inspiration, but he had no idea that this was coming. I mean. Somebody should have came out to help him because I, I can't wrestle. I, I'm a commentator. I couldn't have rescued him. Exactly. I mean, I don't know why um, uh, no one came out to help our world champion. Obviously, they see an opportunity to uh, take the title away from uh, Tom Dahl, especially in his weakened condition. But obviously, that wasn't the case. Um Doyle was just laid out of uh, laid out in the, in the middle of the ring. Thank God we didn't have a money in the bank winner because I'm <laughs> sure they would have cashed in at that moment. You got Oh it. yeah, no, I, that I am truly grateful for that. Um, so the pay per view ended with Ron Buster uh, standing tall, and obviously you can imagine the aftermath. Um, once the pay-per-view went off the air, uh, to uh, Tom Doyle um, went to the back and demanded a match with Ron Buster and um, was more than willing to put his NXW championship on the line uh, to make it happen and the board of directors have granted his wish. Uh, so now it will be a uh, Hell in a Cell match for the NXW World Championship between Ron Buster, the challenger, and Tom Doyle, the world champion. Um, we will discuss that a little bit, uh, a little bit more later on. But uh, let's focus it now on to um, NXW Strong Style, the first ever live stream pay per view. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to apologise for the audio technical difficulties. Uh, uh, during the pay-per-view, um, my voice was a little bit quieter than I wanted it to be, and I do apologise for that. Also, the fact that uh, we had to separate it into parts, so I do apologise for that. Um, we kick off the... Well, we had a little bit of a pre-show Battle Royale, with um, Mayhem winning the Battle Royale, 
and uh, your thoughts on Mayhem, the, rep uh, the third member of the Disciples of Darkness. Mayhem is a actually a good upcoming wrestler to the Disciples of Darkness because uh, he could be like a he could lead the Disciples of Darkness to success into the tag team titles if you think about it. Well, it comes to no surprise that he was given a number one contendership to the uh, NXW Hardcore Championship. And with that being said, uh, the Hardcore title will be defended at NXW Uncensored in a Triple Threat Extreme Rules match between the new champion Eddie Evans, the former champion Tyson Cage, and the Battle Royale winner Mayhem. So obviously uh, a good potential matchup right there. Uh, now... On to another controversial uh, matchup with uh, a rather controversial end. And that was the uh, Steel Cage match between Chaos and Blade Mercer. Now, before I ask for your opinion on this, uh, Demonic, let me explain uh, what happened. So, what basically happened was is that if Chaos lost again to uh, Blade Mercer, uh, not only would he lose his number one contendership for the internet championship, but he will be gone from NXW. Now, this was a back and forth uh, contest, uh, and not a, a good steel cage match. Um, and Chaos did the impossible by ba uh, beating Blade Mercer and retaining his n number one contendership for the internet title. However, after NXW Strong Style had gone off the air and a couple of days passed, uh, the NXW board of directors were having a meeting, you know, just general uh, stuff about uh, where NXW goes from here and discussing NXW Uncensored. Chaos uh, interrupted the meeting and demanded a world title match. Uh, instead of a internet championship match. Now, the board of directors um, were not happy with uh, Chaos uh, bursting in and making demands, so they politely declined um, Chaos's uh, uh, demand and asked him politely to um, get out of the building. Obviously, uh, this ticked off uh, Chaos, and uh, where he tried to put his hands on one of the members of the uh, board of directors. Obviously, um, security was uh, quickly on the scene, and they tackled Chaos down and restrained him. And with, to which, uh, late, uh, right after that, uh, the board of directors fired Chaos on the spot and stripped him of his number one contendership for the internet title and voided and reversed his uh, vic well his uh, supposed victory against Blade Mercer so as it now stands Blade Mercer won the steel cage match via reverse decision and Chaos was is fired from NXW for good uh, from what I've heard now, he has signed with a different company, uh, XVCW, and um, in my opinion, I'm I'm kind of shocked and disappointed, despite the fact that he put up a good performance at uh, Best in the World, and that he managed to uh, keep uh, to keep his job by uh, supposedly winning the Steel Cage match, but then going off and doing something like this is totally out of hand um, especially uh, for a guy like uh, Chaos um, he should have been happy with the fact that he was competing once again for the internet championship but obviously he thought uh, he was uh, eligible to uh, have a world title shot but obviously he only just got one win and you definitely need more than one win to be considered a contender for the world title. Now, Demonic, I'm going to have to ask you on your opinion about the whole situation with the, the steel cage match, uh, the yeah. uh, 
the fact that Chaos is fired and stripped of his number one contendership. Uh, your opinions? Okay, I'm going to start off with the match type. I'm going to build up from the match type and then to the actions of what Chaos did. First of all, the matchup. It was a steel cage match for Chaos's career. So he did whatever it takes to try and win the match. I mean, at the start, he tried escaping the cage as quickly as possible. That wasn't good enough. He gave him a Chaos Bomb. That wasn't good enough. But he managed to take him down with a normal move and then perhaps somehow stunned Blade Mercer and then he took the advantage and won the match. Now, i got to admit, I thought Chaos was going to lose this match because whatever he does against Blade Mercer back in CAW, it 90% of the time didn't work. But he got a better upper hand. He's had more experience now. I think he can now beat Blade Mercer. But, but not before because he was too... No offence, Chaos. You were too arrogant, basically, back in them days. Because you had the CAW champion three times and then won the Elimination Chamber back in 2014 in CAW. Now, on to the backstage thing with the, this meeting thing. Can I ask you a question, Killer? Go ahead. What do you reckon made Chaos act like that? What made you think that he wanted the uh, NXW World Heavyweight Championship instead of of the internet title in, if, in my honest opinion I would have to go with uh, pure arrogance on the part of chaos I mean we're talking about a guy who has had some a long and storied past with Tom Law when it comes to battling over the CAW uh, world title and to which Doyle has held eight times and obviously do it, uh, since the beginning of that rivalry, uh, we've seen Chaos change into a different person. Um, I mean, at the beginning, he thought, you know, he was the best wrestler in the world. But when Doyle came on to CAW and beat him for the title the first time, I think something changed in Chaos's mind. Now, to the point where... He wanted to exchange his internet championship title opportunity for the world title. I think he was a little bit over his head. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a good athlete, but there are point. Uh, there are some times where you have to lie back off and just wait patiently for your time to come. But obviously, chaos for you know. I'm. I know that I'm better. I've, I've proved it on more than one occasion, yada, yada, yada. But obviously, the, the board of directors um, didn't see this, and the locker room didn't see this, and the fans didn't see this at all. Um, so obviously, Chaos' downfall is all down to his arrogance, and obviously, his mouth has got him into trouble, and that is why Chaos has been fired from NXW. Yeah. And I and I already I actually already miss him actually. But um, do you reckon he's going to get rehired, or do you reckon he's going to be gone for good? I think Chaos will have to do a lot more than apologize uh, to uh, you know gain employment. Uh, but I think with the fact that he's now signed with um, you know XVCW, I think this will be a good opportunity for him to. Uh, you know, get some more experience, uh, correct his errors, and you know, see the error of his ways, and uh, uh, be a better person. Uh, so hopefully he will do well in next VCW. I just hope that his arrogance doesn't come back and bite him in the ass. But um, like I said, um, he'll have to do a lot more to get back into uh, NXW. So well, m go on. Yeah. Uh, so moving on, uh, yeah. we were going. We are going to crown a new European champion in a fatal four-way match. Um, it was a a classic uh, matchup uh, between Wales, Scotland, England, and Ireland, and um, it was a fantastic matchup. Uh, like I said earlier, a brilliant opportunity for David England. Uh, to win one championship 
and we gain another championship at a later pay-per-view. But in the end, uh, Wales uh, Oreg Davies uh, walked out as the first ever European champion, and um, Scott uh, Ian McTavish and uh, Ryan McGregor got into a heated battle, uh, to which um, we'll discuss later on. But uh, at the end, Oreg Davies walked out as the new European champion in a fantastic Fatal 4-Way match. Um, Demonic, my question to you is, um, what do you see in the future for the European Championship? He could be a face, you never know. I mean, Tom Doyle is currently a face at the moment because he's the, you know, the NXW champion. But he could... How do I put it? He could hold every single championship because he was a good wrestler. He put up a good performance in that match as well. I mean, you got other champions as well, like Sam Breaker and all that. But, yeah, you know, I'm just saying an example, really. But um, basically, Oreg Davis, he deserved to win in the end. I'll go with man. Uh, a perfect, uh, not to mention a perfect uh, tribute to his uh, late trainer, um, Oreg Williams, who... Uh, which I should point out aren't related by uh, by blood. It's uh, just a coincidence that their first names are uh, Oreg. But uh, in the end, um, Wales walked out uh, the best country in that match um, with uh, Oreg Davies as the European champion. And um, later on, uh, we'll be discussing his first title defence uh, at NXW Uncensored. But moving on to... Yet a, another controversial matchup, but not in the way that the fans anticipated. It was a 30-minute Iron Man match between AJ Freeman and Jai Tong. And as both of us uh, witnessed the monarch, there were a lot of calls where we weren't even sure that were a free count or a two count. And uh, a lot of people got confused over the referee's poor, uh, poor uh, match calling. So... Oh. Just remember, I only saw half of the match, beca a match because I went to get food, right? Yes, you are a fat fuck and uh, I hate you for it. Yes. Uh, but in my opinion, um, I, I would like to take this time to apologize to the NXW fans for the uh, confusion that happened in this match. But from what we uh, can officially confirm is that AJ Freeman is the number one contender for the NXW Television Championship, defeating Jai Tong in a back and forth match. Um, we don't know what the official score in the Iron Man match is due to the confusion that the referee caused. And, um, Demonic, I gotta ask you about the officials poor officiating in this match. Yeah, I did see that. I actually saw that a moment when the official was like literally ignoring everything. He was doing slow counts, ignoring pinfalls and everything. It, do, do you know what? We should get a new referee, like, right now. Well, unfortunately, uh, the NXW Board of Directors are still reviewing um, the options available at this time for new officials. Uh, from what I've heard uh, during their latest uh, board meeting, they are... Uh, looking for applicants uh, for referees for NXW. Uh, at the moment, they've received quite a few applicants, but at the moment, they're just reviewing them, and it might take some time before we get official confirmation on um, a new batch of uh, NXW referees. So, at the end of the match, AJ Freeman uh, stands tall as the new number one contender for the NXW uh, Television Championship and he will face the winner of the ladder match for that title between Majestic and David England which we'll get to later on. Now, the main point of uh, NXW's strong style was a friendly competition between NXW and XVCW and we had two six person tag team match uh, which was a well, um, between both teams, and we started off with the women's uh, tag team match. It was Team NXW, represented by the uh, Anarchy Club, uh, versus a 
um, what I like to call a cabbage patch uh, team, which is a uh, uh, consist of uh, the team captain of uh, Dora Marie, her sister, and Serena, and uh, a very long but highly competitive matchup between these two teams, with uh, with uh, Evelyn Gregory, uh, sorry, uh, delivering a RKO to uh, pick up the win for Team NXW. Demonic, your thoughts on the women's tag team match between NXW? It and was never ended. I gotta admit. Did, how long did it go on for? About half an hour. Half I'm guessing more than that, to be honest. Hour, about forty minutes. If I'm not wrong, probably more than that. You never know. I mean, that is probably got to be the longest match in NXW. Uh, indeed. Um, your thoughts on Team XVCW? Um, I don't know. I don't know what happened to them, but they happened to them in the end because they, they just disappeared after their loss. Uh, they probably went back to XVCW, but Bullet's still here. But, um, I don't know. I, they, they did put up a good fight. I got it back. And your thoughts on the Anarchy Club, and uh, from what I've heard after the match, they be, uh, two of the members did become the, no, uh, the number one contenders for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Uh, do you think that the Anarchy Club could be the next uh, NXW Women's Tag Team Champions? Oh, definitely. Two of them are contenders, yes, but what's the other one going to do? That's the question. Well, Rox uh, Roxanne Dean is uh, pretty much uh, focused on the uh, Women's Championship, but uh, no confirmation on uh, when her next match will be. But... Um, from what I've heard, she is planning to uh, accompany uh, the uh, other two members of the Anarchy Club in a, a title match between the Pretty Mean Sisters. Whether it's uh, confirmed or not uh, remains to be seen, but uh, for now, um, the Anarchy Club are the uh, number one contenders. Um, Moving on to the uh, main event of uh, Strong Style, it was yet another six-person tag team match, but this time it was the men of both NXW and XVCW. Um, yet another controversial end um, to this match, but not in the way that Bullet Sky anticipated. Um, Sam Breaker managed to uh, get the pinfall on Breaker, but it was Razor Andrews who betrayed Team XVCW by not breaking up the pin when um, Bullet Sky needed to be broken up and Sam Breaker got the pin for the team and it was only a matter of time before he was officially announced as the new number one contender for Tom Doyle's uh, World Championship. Yeah, they were. Um, did, I'm not sure if you know now, but them two are actually rivaling and uh, in uh, XVCW at the moment. They are having a rival match. Bullet Sky and uh, what's his face? Uh, Razor Andrews. Razor Andrews. That's the one. Uh, my uh, speaking of X, uh, XVCW, obviously, as you just mentioned, the rivalry between Razor Andrews and Bullet Sky for the world title of XVCW. Um, my my question is obviously the wild card where do you think the third member uh, Chris Rodriguez comes into this will he be on the side of Razor Andrews or will he be on the side of Bullet Sky well he didn't do anything in the match he didn't get pinned he didn't break up the pin either so he might I'm not saying he will he might side with Razor Andrews because he didn't do anything to Razor Andrews after the match at all well, it, that remains to be seen. Um, could Bullet Sky be on the verge of losing his world title to Razor Andrews? Or will ha Bullet Sky have an insurance policy in Chris Rodriguez? That remains to be seen. Uh, so, in the end of the pay per view, Team NXW 2 for 2 reigns supreme over Team XVCW. Now! We will move on to NXW Uncensored, a pay-per-view that I'm personally looking forward to. And we are going to kick off the pay-per-view uh, 
uh, with a six-man Hell in a Cell match for the NXW Cruiserweight Championship as Travis Storm puts his title on the line against five different opponents. And those opponents are Shane Styles, Draven, Jai Tong, Justin Insane, and Benjamin Jackson. Now, Demonic, my question to you uh, going into this matchup, um, do you think Travis Storm has what it takes to walk out of Hell in a Cell with the title retained? Well, I don't know if you ask me, because um, isn't Jai Tong a very good wrestler? He's a very dangerous wrestler indeed. Yeah, Jai Tong, a very uh, dangerous uh, uh, wrestler, um... I could say the same thing for all the uh, contenders as well, but we must not underestimate uh, Travis's Storm's ability. I mean, you got to agree that he is a, a great champion and a great wrestler in, as well. And um, my prediction for this match, I reckon... <clears throat> let's see, I am going to go with... Um, Justin Insane. Nah, nah, I'm going to have to go with Jai Tong because he is a he's a Japanese wrestler and Japanese people do have talent in wrestling. I mean, look at the Japanese wrestling industries. Alright, so there you have it folks. Um, me and Demonic here are predicting the new champion, but for me it's uh, Justin Insane and for Demonic it's Jai Tong. Uh, then after that we have another six person uh, match but it is a six woman ladder match for the number one contender for the NXW Women's Championship and we will see some new faces here um, Demonic uh, but what the uh, some of the contenders have already fought uh, before in the Battle Royale uh, Sophia Lovecraft uh, Sonya Titan uh, Nicole Knight and Lara Strong so we will see two new faces in this um, ladder match now in my opinion I think and I am going to go with Lara Strong on this one I think um, she will put up a good performance here um, obviously uh, I could go with all the two new faces but uh, for the sake of experience I am going to go with uh, Lara Strong on this one well, Nicole's night uh, debut does look interesting. So even though I haven't seen a wrestler yet, wrestle her yet, but she does look like a tough woman. So I'm going to go with Nicole Knight. Okay, there you have it, folks. Uh, Nicole Knight for Demonic Burger and uh, Lara Strong for me. Uh, okay, so the uh, European Championship uh, in a last man standing match, or to be contested in a last man standing match, uh, as Oreg Davies, representing Wales, will take on Poland's Gabriel Kroll, uh, so from Poland, should I uh, mention? Uh, so England, uh, sorry, Wales versus Poland. Uh, your thoughts on this matchup? Well, I don't know actually. What Welsh people versus Polish people? I don't, I don't know. What What do you think? Well, you go look at the. Who has the most advantages over the other guys? So, Oleg Davies uh, a little bit older than Gabriel Kroll. So yeah, yeah. Experience goes into the uh, experience goes to uh, Oleg Davies. Uh, technical wrestling also goes to Oleg Davies. Thing is, but, thing is, sorry to interrupt you, but um, I reckon, or actually reconsidering, Oleg Davies might win because um, back in that fatal four-way match. He was. He is a. Uh, he didn't come up with a win, so I reckon he could like overwhelm his opponent. Uh, like I was saying before, uh, Gabriel Kroll has the speed, uh, and I don't think he has the strength advantage as well as the uh, the youth as well. So I am gonna go uh, as much as a great champion Oleg Davies is. I am gonna go for the new blood, which is uh, the Polish power. House uh, Gabriel Kroll, so uh, Ola Davies uh, for Demonic and Gabriel Kroll for me. Uh, coming up next, uh, if I can just remember, the Internet Championship match uh, between uh, Sam Breaker, Bad News Bullet, 
Tom Heather and uh, the replacement of Chaos, Blade Mercer. And I can officially confirm that Sam Baker will defend his title in a Fatal 4-Way TLC match at NXW Uncensored. So it was a close vote. Um, uh, one vote for Falls Count anywhere, uh, one vote for Hell in a Cell, but TLC just managed to uh, beat those two, uh, beat the uh, three match types uh, by two votes. So Sam Baker defends his uh, title in a TLC match and um, this is a high stakes match for Sam Baker because when you think about it, Sam Baker has the opportunity to not only retain his title but to go on to the next pay-per-view as the internet champion and challenge for the world title. So for Sam Baker, he has the opportunity to become the first ever uh, person to hold two belts at the same time. Uh, your thoughts on this matchup? Oh god, don't start me off. Um, basically, to the people who would win it, I would have voted Chaos, but since he's no longer in the match, I'm going to have to go with probably Blade Mercer, because he is a tough competitor. Even though he lost to Chaos, he is a tough competitor. Well, in the official um, in the history books, it will state that uh, Blade Mercer did defeat Chaos via reverse decision, just to clear things up. Um, my prediction... Well, I really want Sam Baker to win this match, mainly because we might have an opportunity to see a title for title champion versus champion match between Baker and Doyle. So, no offence to Tom Heather, Bandage Bullet or Blaine Mercer. They're all great competitors, but I want to see a title versus title match, uh, so I'm going to go with uh, Sam Baker to uh, retain his title. Now, hang on a second. What do you think will happen? What would you think of Sam Baker if he won this match as well? Well, either way, it will be a huge opportunity for him to walk out with uh, the next pay per view with two titles, or it could be a huge, op uh, or it could be a huge opportunity for Doyle to walk out with two titles. But at the end of the next pay per view, either Breaker or Doyle walks out with two titles, unless Mercer, Bullet, or Heather walks out as the Internet Championship, and not to mention. Sam Breaker is undefeated, so not only is he putting his title on his li on line, he's putting his undefeated streak as well on the line. So it will be a very good matchup and an interesting matchup to uh, to see. But moving on to the uh, television championship match, uh, which will be contested in a ladder match between the new champion Majestic and David England. Now, as we mentioned before, David England had an opportunity to become the first wrestler in the NXW roster to hold two belts at the same time. Obviously, he did not walk away of strong style with the European Championship. And basically, it's a do or die match for England now that he has not won a match yet in NXW. So... A huge advantage to Majestic being a ladder match. Um, your thoughts on this matchup uh, as as David England faces Majestic for the NXW Television Championship? Well, as you said, it's a do or die for David England since he's never won a match. But um, it's basically a dirty versus high flyer, really. And uh, I don't know, there have been dirty wrestlers against high flyers before, haven't there? Like uh, Edge versus Rey Mysterio, if you remember that, at the Royal Rumble. Um, but uh, I, don't, I don't know, actually. I reckon <coughs> David England will break that streak in this pay-per-view. I just had that feeling it's going to end here. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with you that, uh, on that. Despite the fact that um, Majestic has the advantage with it being a ladder match, I think David England may have a plan to regain the NXW Television Championship. But you never know. Maybe the advantage will come true for Majestic and will retain the title but for me and Demonic we're going to put our money on uh, David England for uh, for the ladder match 
Uh, moving on to the first of two steel case matches for both the tag team titles. We're going to start things off with a, uh, a battle of nations between Scotland and Ireland as Ireland's uh, McGregor brothers battle Scotland's McTavish clan in a tornado tag team steel cage match for the World Tag Team Championships. Now, this all started at a uh, strong style when Ryan McGregor and Ian McTavish were part of the Fatal 4-Way European Championship match and they had a massive brawl during that match. Um, so, in my opinion, I am going to go with the Irish lads on this one to retain the championships. Uh, Demonic, your thoughts on Eng uh, sorry, not England, uh, Scotland versus Ireland. Um, I'm going to have to agree with you there, actually. Um, England versus Ireland, I mean, uh, you got... Scotland. Sco is it Scotland, is it? Yeah, Scotland versus Ireland. Okay, Scotland versus Ireland. Um, I don't know, because you got like the Scottish people versus the Irish people, and uh, they have rivaled before, as I've mentioned, uh, against the Dirty and the, you know, you get a picture. Um, yeah. I don't know. But, I, yeah, I will have to agree with you there, actually. Okay, so we're going for Ireland uh, to retain the World Tag Team Championships against Scotland's McTavish clan. Uh, two, uh, two teams of brothers. It will be a, a heck of a brawl and a good match to see. Uh, moving on to the second uh, steel cage match for the Women's Tag Team Championships. As we mentioned earlier, the Pretty Meanly Sisters will defend their titles against the Anarchy Club, uh, whether the third member and leader, Roxanne Dean, will be there to uh, manage the other two uh, members is still unconfirmed, but from what we know is is that it's going to be a heck of a match to see. Um, I reckon... Whew, I'm not too sure to... Uh, go on. The Anarchy Club, possibly? <clears throat> I'm going to go with the Anarchy Club. I mean, they they de they had an impressive showing at uh, NXW Strong Style. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, with uh, Roxanne Dean possibly be there at ringside, I do definitely got the numbers advantage. So, for me, I'm going to go with the Anarchy Club to walk out of NXW Uncensored, the uh, new NXW Women's Tag Team Champions. Yeah. Any more thoughts on the match? What about this uh, match with the Anarchy Club? Yeah, uh, anything you want to add? Um, I don't know actually, because they have been in a pay-per-view before, and they are actually a very, very good tag team, to be honest with you, uh, Kid Along. Um, but at the end of the day, there are tag teams out there who will overwhelm the Anarchy Club. Definitely. And that remains to be seen. But moving on to another tag team match, a non-titled tag team match. Uh, the Disciples of Darkness will take on a, the team of Kobayashi and a mystery partner of his. Um, and I have no idea who the mystery partner is. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson is uh, being very typed, uh, typed lipped about it. And... Um, to be honest, I'm going to have to go with uh, Disciples of Darkness uh, due to the fact that I do not know who Kobayashi's mystery partner is. Uh, it could be some uh, someone less experienced than him or or it could go either way. But for me, I'm going to go It could go be with... a special guest. You never know. It could be a celebrity. <clears throat> you don't know. That could be true. But uh, for me, Disciples of Darkness will pick up the win over Kobayashi's team. Uh, your thoughts on uh, who might be the uh, special partner for Kobayashi? Um, let me give you a think about that. Uh, who would it be the partner? Oh. You never know. It could be a former world uh, champion. Of it NXT. could be a WWE superstar for all we know. I don't know. They could come to NXW for like this one time. I don't know. Well, it will be... Uh... An interesting match to see, but speaking of interesting matches, Demonic, uh, we have a special six-man tag team warfare match, but the problem is we 
don't know who the participants are. Not even Jeremy Clarkson, our matchmaker slash general manager, doesn't even know. But what we do know is that the board of directors made this match up uh, as a special treat for the NXW fans. So, uh, to be honest, I have no idea who the participants are. Do you have any ideas, Demonic? What, in this six-man tag team match? Yep. No idea. I haven't got a clue. I mean, you got to guess six people here. I, I don't... Yeah. Well, whether it be a faction or separate entities, it will remain to be uh, seen. Uh, but moving on to the NXW Hardcore Championship will be defended in an Extreme Rules or No Holds Barred uh, match. Uh, as the champion, Eddie Evans, uh, will be tested against former champion Tyson Cage and Mayhem and... I am going to go with Tyson Cage on this one. Yeah. Because I think, um, you know, he's been on the hardcore scene longer than Mayhem and Ed, uh, Eddie Evans. He's, uh, you know, he's bleed, uh, bledded a lot. He's a bit, He's put many people uh, through tables, uh, including himself. Uh, he's been he's probably the most resilient um uh, out of all two of them, so for my money's worth, I am going to go with uh, Tyson Cage. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Tyson. <clears throat> we have had a lot of agreements on here. I mean, we haven't had a lot of agreements in the past, have we? I mean, look at us. <laughs> We've had uh, like the Doyle matches. We had arguments there. We had the Chaos matches. We had arguments there. But we're actually agreeing on something. This is good for our friends. I know, this is a miracle, and it, it isn't even the pay-per-view yet. <laughs> oh, God. But... Not to take anything away from the champion Eddie Evans and Mayhem, uh, great competitors. Um, Eddie Evans, uh, in my opinion, is uh, championship material, but I just don't think that uh, the hardcore ch uh, title. Um, sh well, I just don't think he'll go well with the hardcore title. I mean, if it was, uh, I don't know, the internet championship, maybe, maybe he will be. You know, a great internet champion, but we are dealing with a division where, like I said before, injuries are frequent, weapons are encouraged, and you never know who the participants are going to be. So, like we said before, Tyson Cage will walk out the uh, winner. Now, this is yet another interesting matchup. Uh, the triple threat match for the NXW Women's Championship. Now, like I said before, the board of directors have stated that Christina Bloodrose will pay the price for what she did at NXW Best in the World and she will put her title on the line against former champion Jessica Bishop and rightful number one contender Olivia Lockhart. Um... I am going to go with new champion on this one, but I'm not too sure whether to choose between Jessica Bishop or Olivia Lockhart, considering the fact that she managed to pull off the biggest upset in NXW history. I reckon Christina Blood Rose is going to win. Uh, your thoughts on why? Because... Did you see what she did? Well, I know, but for her to win the title, she had to... Take another uh, Olivia Lockhart's opportunity while her pack was turned, and she didn't expect it. And speaking of didn't expect it, uh, Jessica Bishop didn't expect to face Jessica Bishop in a title match. So obviously her actions are, you know, a little bit unforgivable. But in the end, I reckon she will pay the part, uh, the ultimate price, and I think uh, she will lose her title. To either Bishop or Olivia Lockhart. Well, um, even though they didn't expect it, um, she still beat the uh, the former champion, should I say? Um, but even though she also lost the battle royal as well, but um, she probably uh, did have a fluke in that match. I don't know. You never know. She she might be a really tough diva in NXW. You don't know. Well. I'm looking forward to this match as well as the uh, NXW fans are pretty much looking forward to it. But we move on to the main event 
of NXW Uncensored. Yeah. The NXW World Championship Hell in the Cell match between Tom Doyle and Ron Buster, in which fans are calling the inspired versus the inspiration, with Ron Buster being the inspiration and Tom Doyle being the inspired. Now, let, let's uh, go back a little bit to how this all began. Uh, probably way before NXW hit uh, hit the YouTube screens, uh, Doyle was uh, pretty much a standard uh, wrestler, you know, working his way up the ranks. And uh, before, way before he even uh, went on to uh, CAW, Doyle was um, pretty much uh, looking for a way to, uh, you know, improve himself. And that's where he saw Ron Buster in the FEM shows. And from that moment on, he became inspired, um, decided to uh, better himself in both wrestling skills and appearance, um, you know, attire-wise. And um, ever since he stepped in the CAW, it's been improvement after improvement after improvement for Doyle. And, you know, the improvements kept on coming through uh, CAW, PGW, um, oh, don't at, forget, don't forget, uh, Doyle did get inducted into the CAW Hall of Fame, so he is the first ever CAW Hall of Famer. Yeah. That is true as well, and uh, I know, and when NXW did finally hit YouTube, um, nearly a year ago, I think, I'm not too sure, probably a little bit less than that, but nevertheless, um, Doyle pretty much uh, reached the pinnacle of core wrestling, and... Um, uh, NXW will be best in the world he pretty much did become best in the world but then out of nowhere he gets attacked by the person that he was inspired by and now he finds himself in uh, defending his title against the person who pretty much stabbed him in the back uh, in Rombuster so I hate to say it, I sound biased, but I really hope Tom Doyle walks out of uh, Hell in the Cell with the world title well, and uh, gives Ron Buster what he deserved for stabbing him in the back. Yeah. I know, I know, it sounds biased, but you know, considering you know the history uh, of Doyle and how he was inspired, um, you know, you gotta believe that Doyle deserves a bit of payback. For what happened at NXW Best in the World? Um, if Ron Buster does win the uh, NXW title, I have a very scary feeling inside that he's going to walk away with it and go back to his own show and keep that title. And it's one of those fears that will probably motivate um, Doyle's uh, strongest weapon in his arsenal and that is his determination. The same determination in which he used to defeat Blood in a Hell in a Cell match. Uh, so obviously he has the advantage going into this match this, uh, due to the experience that he has in Hell in a Cell. Obviously not the case with Ron Buster who lost his recent Hell in a Cell match at his own shows. Uh, the anniversary free event against Black Heron uh, in rather controversial fashion, I might add. But uh, the record states that um, Ron Buster did lose his Hell in a Cell match at the anniversary free. Uh, Doyle won his uh, last um, his last Hell in a Cell match, so obviously the advantage goes to Doyle. Um, but the experience uh, goes to Ron Buster, but. In the end, I see Doyle walking out as an XRB world champion. Um, one more thing to add about this, uh, if Ron Buster wins this matchup, he might do a CM Punk, really, because he did like duplicate the WWE Championship, even though he was the owner and he left with it, and they crowned John Cena with it. But what happens if NXW came with two, not one, two NXW world titles? Well, there will be a lot of confusion and probably it will be a 
NXW Board of Directors uh, worst nightmare. But hopefully, if Doyle does walk out as NXW World Champion, we could potentially see the title versus title match between him and Sam Breaker. But we will have to wait and see if Breaker retains his title and Doyle retains his title. So, there you have it, folks. Um, NXW Uncensored coming soon uh, to YouTube. Looking forward to it as well. Yep, and... Um, Join me and Demonic Burger for commentary uh, as we uh, uh, give you all the highs and lows of uh, you know the pay per view. Uh, of course, we've made our predictions, so hopefully we can get all of them right. Although I'm not a gambling man, so I'm not going to put any actual money on it. But uh, you never know. So hopefully it'll be a great uh, pay per view, um, and hopefully. You know, after NXW Uncensored is in the books. Uh, Without a shadow uh, of a doubt. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt, it'll be a great pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. And uh, so hopefully by the time NXW Uncensored is in the books, uh, WWE 2K17 will, won't be long to come out. And it will be a better experience than 2K15, because let's be honest, that was a piece of shit. Yeah. Um... So yeah, hopefully um, it will be when it's done. It will be it will be all good in the good in the hood. So I guess that is it for now. Um, thank you for joining us for this NXW podcast thingy. Um, this was kind of like uh, last minute, but um, we kind of I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different to build up the hype for NXW Uncensored and speaking of building up the hype um, I am working on an NXW website for those who are interested uh, I can't give a confirmed date of uh, when it will be uh, released but um, this website will contain a roster page, a news page, results page uh, um, you know uh, music page for all the theme music for all the NXW wrestlers and divas and um, so hopefully uh, it will be more interactive uh, for all of you uh, fans so stay tuned uh, for more news on the NXW official website um, so hopefully uh, we haven't bored you to death with our predictions but uh, if you want to give your thoughts on any of the past matches or pay-per-views or any thoughts on NXW Uncensored, feel free to uh, leave a comment down below um, or hit us up in the social media. You can follow me at Twitter at MrKiller365. Uh, you can also follow Demonic Burger. H uh, how can people follow you on Twitter, uh, Demonic? Uh, at GM Cheeseburger, not Demonic Burger. It's uh, at GM Cheeseburger, which I still go by, but I prefer Demonic Burger to a name better. Yeah. So at GM Cheeseburger, if you want to follow Demonic uh, on Twitter, uh, you can follow uh, both me and NXW on Facebook. We have uh, Facebook pages, so if you want to search NXW or Mr. Carl 365 on Facebook, feel free to do so. Uh, I'm also on DeviantArt. I'm on the Great uh, Gamer Square. Are you um, um Are you on Instagram? Uh, yeah, I'm on the Instagram as well, but uh, it pretty much for private use. I think I'm not too sure. I don't use it that much, but feel free to uh, check out all of my social links uh, in the description below. I'll also put all the the social media links for Demonics. Um, uh, social media live if he ever has one yeah but uh, the thing is my Facebook page is not GM Cheeseburger so that's going to get really confusing it's uh, Demonic Burger on my Facebook page alright so um, so there you have it folks uh, feel free to subscribe to both me and Demonic's uh, YouTube channels uh, yeah. I appreciate the support please help me get to 50 fucking subscribers no don't Fuck off, you got more subscribers than me. Share the wealthy <laughs> bastard.
so yeah, um, feel free to uh, hit us up on the social medias, uh, subscribe to us, uh, comment down below on this video, on your thoughts on NXW in general or uh, the pay views. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this podcast thingy. I'm not too sure whether there's going to be another episode, but if I can get uh, you know another member of the NXW roster to join me uh, for you know an interview or whatever, that'll be greatly appreciated. But if you're one of the roster uh, members who are listening to this, uh, and if you want to be interviewed, then just. Uh, say so in the comment section and uh, we'll arrange something but until then for me and demonic burger uh this is goodbye and we will see you later say goodbye demonic demon out see you guys <laughs>